Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. My name is Ben Pulowski. I'm a Senior Learning Center trainer here at Geotab, and uh, I will be walking you through the webinar today. So our topic for today is My Geotab Hours of Service Admin. Uh, so two weeks ago on our last Wildcard Wednesday, we focused on the driver side of things, going through Geotab Drive, a day in the life of a driver and everything they need to know. Today is the other side where we're gonna be taking a look at the admin side, uh, setting up users, running reports, editing logs, DVIR, so all from the admin side of things. Uh, so again, that is the focus for today. Uh, if uh, uh, there are uh, issues or concerns with Geotab Drive, we have plenty of resources out there. So today, just focusing on the admin side of hours of service. So we're gonna start here on the, uh, the database side. Uh, we do have a couple uh, documents that I'm going to share with you at the end that's going to walk you through everything that I am doing in this presentation. So you don't have to memorize everything as we go, uh, so you will have some resources to take with you. Um, so from the admin side, the first thing that we're going to focus on is uh, entering in some company information. So after you've logged into your database as an administrator, uh, you can go here under administration to system and then system settings. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fill in the company name and you're also going to want to fill in the company address field. So this is going to populate on the compliance print when you run logs within the database. So you want to make sure that you fill in this information. Uh, down here at the bottom uh, under other, you also have this maximum personal conveyance distance. If you are going to allow your drivers to use the uh, the truck for uh, personal conveyance if they are going to be uh, driving from a uh, from their hotel to a restaurant or anything like that. So this is an option that you have available to you uh, and it allows you to set the maximum personal conveyance if you choose to allow personal conveyance. So whatever number that you have entered in here, uh, right here we have 47 miles. And what this means is that after 47 miles of personal conveyance, it's basically putting a cap on it. And it's saying after that distance has been traveled by the driver, it's going to put them on the drive line. Also want to show you here, if uh, you go up here to vehicles, um, now we're assuming that the uh, device has already been installed in the vehicle, you have your tablet set up, and the device has been added to your database. So we have some resources uh, available to you, but we're just sort of making those assumptions for this demonstration and going from here. If you select a vehicle, and if you go to more details, there's a couple things that I wanna show you. Uh, one is the license plate, which you'll want to enter for your vehicle. And then you also have, down here, under detailed device info, you have hours of service. And there's three options here, on, automatic, and off. And when you add a vehicle into your database, by default, this is gonna be set to automatic. The first time that a driver logs into the Geotab Drive app and selects this vehicle, this is automatically going to change from automatic to on. There's no action required on your part. And when this is set to on, this vehicle is going to automatically begin generating hours of service logs. Again, no action required on your part. When you log into the Geotab Drive app, select the vehicle, this is going to change, and it's going to continue to generate duty status logs moving forward. If you have this set to off, it's not going to generate duty status logs. So you would have it set to off if you have, for example, dedicated vehicles that are not going to be used for hours of service purposes. You also, some other information here, you want to verify the VIN and make sure that that's correct. You want to make sure that the odometer is correct. And then you also want to make sure that the engine hours are correct. After you have your vehicle set up, you can add in your trailers. 
And that's here under engine and maintenance. And you have trailers. These are the trailers that we have added into our database already. These are going to be available to drivers when they log into the GeoTab Drive app. Drivers also have the option on their side to add in trailers that are not already in the database. And those, were fil those will filter through and those will automatically populate within the database. To add a trailer, click right up here where it says add. Add in our trailer. If you want or need to, you can add in a comment and you can assign the trailer to a group and hit save. Now you can add trailers one at a time. You also have the option to do a bulk import. This is a free add-on that is available through the GeoTab Marketplace, which you can access through your database clicking right here on Marketplace. But this bulk import trailer add-in, let's try this one throwing an error right now. Um, but this utilizes the GeoTab SDK. So if you need to add 50 trailers to your database, you can click on that bulk import trailers and it's gonna show you basically the format that it needs to be in, where you would enter in the trailer name, uh, any comments, the group. You can even, uh, and this is probably the easiest way to do it, you can set up that document in Excel and then you would just copy and paste it here into the UI. But again, you need to get this bulk import trailer add-in from the GeoTab Marketplace and that is 100% free. So you have your vehicle set up, you have your trailer set up. Next, gonna wanna add in your users, your drivers specifically. Under administration, you have users. And you're gonna click add up here at the top like you would for any other user. First thing you would put in is the username. Now it says email here, but it doesn't have to be an email address. If you're just adding a driver, they might not have a company email address and that's okay. Now, if you want them to receive emailed reports, this does have to be an email. If you're not as worried about that, then doesn't have to be. So I'll put in my username. This is what the driver is gonna enter when they log into GeoTab Drive. I'll put in first name, last name, and I'm gonna leave this set to basic authentication. Next, I'm gonna enter in a password for this driver. Now you also have the option here to force password change on next login. What this does is it would email the user a link to create their own password. Now obviously, in order to do that, this username is going to have to be an email address. It's not, so this is grayed out. Here I have my security clearance. Now there's default security clearances that are built into my GeoTab. You can also create your own custom security clearances depending on what you want the driver to be able to do. So if you want, for example, uh, DVIR only, or messaging only, or if you want the driver to be able to change their own rule set, you can create a custom security clearance for that driver. Most of the time though, what you're gonna be using is the default security clearance right here, which is the drive app user. Below that, you have the data access, you would set this to groups appropriate for the user. And users are not gonna be able to see vehicles or HOS logs outside of their data access. And this is your groups list. So depending on what I want this user to be able to see, if they're gonna log into the database, I can enter in data access here. At the bottom, you have the option to input 
your designation, an employee number, and any comments. Next, up here at the top, next to the user tab, you have the driver tab. You need to make sure that this user is a driver is set to yes. If it's not, they will not be able to log into the app. And if you have an instance where you have a driver who can't log into the app, that's usually where I start. Make sure this user is a driver is set to yes. And you also want to make sure that they have the correct security clearance. Also, prevent driver access to shared data. Want to make sure that that's set to yes as well. Uh, UI settings. So you can configure distance measurement system, fuel economy measurement. Probably the most important one to set up here is going to be the time zone for the driver. Finally, you have HOS settings. First one here is the rule set. So you want to choose what rule set is going to apply to this driver. So we'll just put them on a 60 hour, seven day. Below that, you have a couple of oil field exemptions. Now these are for drivers with very specific qualifications in very specific industries. If you're not involved in any sort of oil field or oil servicing, you can leave these turned off. If you are, you have the option to allow for oil field equipment transport operation or oil well service operation, and you can just turn those on. Next, you have the home terminal, the home terminal address, and the carrier number. And you want to make sure that these are all filled out. You do need these filled out in order to be compliant. Below that, you have a yard move exemption and a personal conveyance exemption. Uh, personal conveyance is more so at the discretion of the carrier, whether you want to allow your drivers to use the vehicles for personal use. Yard move is also at the discretion of the carrier, um, but we strongly recommend that this is turned on. There is, um, it's helpful if you have trucks moved in the yard after hours. So you have someone who maybe isn't a drive app user, they're moving the truck. It has the potential to put the previous driver back on the drive line if they have not logged out all of the way. A yard move exemption is pretty much going to take care of that. So again, carrier's discretion, but strongly recommend that this is turned on. You also have the authority name and the authority address. And again, you want to make sure that those are filled out to be compliant. When you're done, hit save. Scroll down here. And here's the driver we just added. Under activity, down at the bottom, you have HOS. And there's three sections here. You have duty status logs, you have a violations report, and you have an availability report. We're gonna go through each of these. So duty status logs is going to show the record of duty status for individual drivers. And you can view it as a graph, as a compliance print, if you need to edit a duty status log, if you need to, um, if you need to edit a log, if you need to add in an annotation, if you need to add a log, you would do it through here. Under options, you can choose your date range. And then you can choose your driver. And when you hit apply changes, it's going to bring up the duty status logs for the driver that you selected. So here, it tells us the duty status, showing us here that the rule set was changed. 
Here we have an example of a yard move exemption with an annotation. Here we have on duty with an annotation. And it just displays them in list form for the entire date range. It's going to show you the trailer that was attached to the vehicle, the time, the location. Up here is the date. The duration in that log, or in that status rather, and the assigned vehicle. Logs that are verified are going to have a check mark next to them. Logs that were edited are going to have this pencil icon. Up here, no check mark. These are logs that are currently un or, uh, unverified, and the driver still would need to verify these logs through the GeoTab Drive app. In addition to exemptions and annotations, this is also going to show you violations. So this driver went on the drive line at 8.23 p.m. yesterday, the 29th. They had a violation at 8.54 p.m. where they exceeded their 11-hour driving limit. To edit a log, you can click on it. And here, you can edit the date and time. You can edit the duty status. You can change the vehicle that they were assigned to. The driver, these are just drop down lists. Co driver, and the location. Now this is here essentially if the driver makes a mistake. You want to make sure that you're not just going through and editing logs as you see fit. It's here as a, a safety measure, but you do have the ability to edit these logs if you need to. For example, changing this to a drive log and hit save. This is the log right here. I just edited it, so it shows the pencil icon. The check mark has disappeared. Because the log has been edited, the driver now needs to re-verify this log, and they will be prompted to do so the next time they log into the app. Now this is also going to show what edits have been made. Here's the edit I just made today. 1.24 p.m., I changed an on-duty log to a drive log. Part of the ELD update, or the ELD mandate, is that under your driver list, you now have an option for unidentified driver. So part of that mandate is keeping records of when the vehicle was driven, whether it was for hours of service purposes in that moment or not. So you can run the logs for unidentified driver if the vehicle was driven, but there was no driver assigned to that vehicle at the time. And there's basically two things that need to happen here with these unidentified driver logs. Option number one is these logs need to be assigned to a driver. That's option number one. Option number two is that the carrier needs to annotate the log as to why it is being left unassigned. That is part of the ELD mandate. That is part of staying in compliance. So these logs are created, again, when a vehicle is driven without a driver logged in. Those trips are still going to be recorded. They're going to have a duty status set automatically. 
and you can find them by running it here for unidentified driver. Drivers can claim these logs through the app or you can assign them on the database side. To assign a log to a driver, it's just like editing a log that I just showed you. Click on the log. And then you would choose the driver from the drop down list. So, right here, this log is unidentified. Please associate a driver with this log or add an annotation. Select my driver. I can also add in a co driver if I need to and hit save. So, now when I run the logs, for that driver I just changed it to, it's now going to appear there. And you also have some other information here to help you. So if you're not sure who the driver was, you do have the location, you have the date, and you have the vehicle. So that can help you provide insight into which driver was responsible for the log. Again, you can choose to leave logs unassigned, but you do have to provide an annotation as to why you're doing it. So the Drive app does ask drivers to claim unassigned logs whenever they log in, and sometimes drivers can make a mistake. So when a driver logs into Geotab Drive, it's gonna say, here are the unassigned logs for the vehicle that you just selected. Do you wanna claim any of these? And sometimes drivers can make a mistake and they can claim a log which maybe isn't theirs. If you do have that happen, you can reassign those incorrectly claimed logs. So again, we're here, we're still here under duty status logs. And under options, you can choose the date range and you can choose the driver that that log is incorrectly assigned to. Here's the one that we just assigned. If you click on it, here we have the driver, and you can just update that field and save it. It may not happen immediately. We have this message up here. Selected logs have been queued for processing. This may take some time to complete. So you might not see it instantaneously, but it will reassign the log to the correct driver. So when you're viewing the duty status logs, for every day, you have this button that says View Graph. And this is going to show you sort of a visual representation. This is the graph view of the logs as opposed to this list view that we see down here. It shows time spent in each duty status. So off, sleeper berth, drive, and on. Over here on the right, it shows time spent in each of these duty statuses for this 24 hour period. The logs are color coded here. So gray are gonna be unverified logs. Logs that are green are verified. Logs here that are yellow like this one are logs that were edited. And then red, like this right here, is when the driver was in violation of their rule set. Uh, if you need to, you can change the view. You can run any custom reports that you've added into your database, or you can download the logs. And then you also have this compliance print. And this is gonna populate with all the information that you've added in. So it's pulling in that company information that I showed you. So the company name and the company address, the home terminal and the home terminal address, which may be the same or they may be different, carrier number, truck 
license plate, trailers, driver, rule set, time zone, all the information from the logs is listed in here. Duty status, time, date, location, annotations, exemptions, it's all here. And you have the option, you can either print this out as a hard copy if you want, or you can just save it as a PDF. But that's that compliance print button right up here. So that's all here under duty status logs. Again, you are gonna get documentation before, before the end today. It's gonna show you everything that I'm going through. Underneath duty status logs, you have violations. Options, you can choose your date range, and you can select individual drivers, or you can select all. Click Apply Changes, and it's gonna generate the report. Here we have it sorted by driver. So we have here the type of violation, so rest, driving, workday, or cycle, when the violation occurred, the specific violation, driving time. Over here on the right, you have this link to view logs. So this is actually gonna take you back to the duty status logs page that we were just on. And it's gonna show you for that driver, their violations. Here, you can sort it by driver. So up here at the top, this button that says sort by, sort it by driver, or site, uh, sort it by the violation type. So cycle violations, driving violations, rest violations, and workday violations. So maybe this is an opportunity to give you some insight, coaching opportunities for your drivers. If you have, for example, more, you're seeing more rest violations than anything else, you need to make sure that they're taking their 30-minute uh, rest period after eight hours. Like before, you can change the view to either report or advanced or any custom reports you've added in. And when you change the view, you have the option to download it either as a PDF file or as an Excel file. And the same applies to the duty status logs. Uh, the last item I wanna show you here under HOS is an availability report. This is how much time is remaining before they're required to take a rest period, how much time they have left driving, duty time remaining, workday time remaining, and cycle time remaining. Here, we have these drivers who have zero time remaining before a rest period. So they would have to take a rest period before they can drive again. View logs, just like in the violations report, will link you back to the duty status logs page. This report can be sorted by availability, but you can sort it by their rule set, time remaining before rest period, driving time remaining, duty, workday, and cycle time remaining. So that's the HOS section. Um, what I wanna show you next is under engine and maintenance and take a look at DVIR. So right here, engine and maintenance, DVIR. So a driver is required to perform a vehicle inspection at the end of their shift. Uh, even if the driver is operating more than one vehicle during the day, they have to submit an inspection report for each vehicle. After the inspection report is submitted, maintenance staff must review the DVIR, take corrective action on identified issues, and they're gonna have to update the report through the interface.
and they should note if repairs have been made or if repairs were unnecessary. When you go into DVIR, here you have your options. And you can choose your date range, run report, so you can view all of the inspection reports that were submitted. You have defective, repaired, certified, or you can view all. You have the option to include historical data. So if this is set to yes, this would include vehicles that were active at the time the inspection report was submitted, but have since been made historic in the database. Choose your vehicles, so you can run it for an individual vehicle. Select all. And you can also view trailers as well. Hit apply changes, and it's going to bring up the data. You have some icons over here on the left. A green check mark signifies that the vehicle is safe to operate. If you have this blue wrench here, it means that a uh, repair has been performed on the vehicle. If you have an X, a red X here, means that the vehicle was unsafe to operate. It's since been repaired. And if you have a red wrench right here, it means that the vehicle needs repairs. So this is one where this vehicle is in need of a repair. Um, this is showing you the date and the time when the DVIR was submitted, the vehicle or the trailer, whether it was a pre-trip or a post-trip, and then the driver. If you click on it, You can view additional details. For example, address, odometer, license plate, remark that was submitted with the report. Depending on the status of the DVIR, you have this top menu here. So for example, if you need to perform a repair on the vehicle, we have this option, this button right here that says repaired, or we can enter in the repair, or return will take us back to the previous screen. So I go to click on repair, and I need to choose who did that repair. And I can enter in a remark. So replace tire, whatever the repair was. After the vehicle has been repaired, it needs to be certified. Certified that it is safe to operate or otherwise. So I would enter in the user who's certifying the repair enter in a remark and then I would certify as safe or certify as unsafe. So the repair has been made, the repair has been certified, I can hit return, and it'll take me back to my previous screen. You can use View to download the report, access any custom reports. Um, one report that I would recommend is a free download from the Geotab Marketplace, which is a DVIR defects alert report. Again, that's accessible right here through Marketplace. And what this report does is that it uh, allows you to have an email alert sent out if there was a DVIR with a defect submitted in the previous 30 minutes. And it's going to email that out to you and let you know. So this is a good one to add. Again, totally free. You can find it in the marketplace. If you search for DVIR, you'll be able to find it. And if you want this to go to your maintenance staff, within 30 minutes of a defect, you can set that up and it's all gonna be automated. And when drivers log in to Geotab Drive and they can submit or they can perform their vehicle inspection, 
there's a list of default defects that's already in there. But on the admin side, you also have the option to add in your own defects. And when you're here on the DVIR screen, we have this button right up here at the top that says defects. Well, these are different defect lists that already exist within the database. I'm just going to hit add up here and create a new one. So I'm adding in a name for my defect list. And then I can add in parts and defects. So I'll start with tires and add the part. So this is basically the category. The X button here is going to delete this category. The pencil will allow me to edit it. So I don't want to do tires. I want to do engine. Plus sign is going to let me to add a defect. And I can classify the defect as a critical defect or a normal defect. So I'll call this uh, low tire pressure, low on air. And hit the check mark to add it. Add in another defect, I can classify this as critical. So we'll say low tread, so a bald tire, and add that in. And it classifies that critical defect as red. When I'm done, I can hit save up here at the top. Now you've added in your new defect list, and you would just repeat that, adding in different categories and different defects, whether they are critical defects or normal defects. Now that's only the first step. The second step is you would go back into administration and your system settings. And right here under DVIR, you have the default vehicle defects list and the default trailer defects list. So you can create defects for both vehicles and trailers. You can then select the defects list that you entered and hit save. Now a couple things to be aware of here. Number one, the DVIR on the tablet is only going to display the defects in this list. Number two, it's going to apply to all vehicles. So what you would not be able to do is have these defects for these vehicles and these other defects for these other vehicles. You can't do that. You get one defect list that applies to all of your vehicles, and you get one defect list to, that applies to all of your trailers. When you're done, hit save. And that's going to update on the app side. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you today is messaging. And this is a feature that has been around in some form uh, with Geotab for, for some time now. Um, but it's gone through a couple different iterations. And the feature that I'm going to show you now is currently in beta. And to access beta features, you need to make sure that you have feature preview turned on. You can do that on a user level. So if I click here on my username in the upper right and I go to my user options, and I have this button right here that says feature preview. By default, it's going to be off, but turn it on and then save. A word of warning. And it says it right here, feature preview will enable some of the exciting new features we are working on. These features may break or may change, break or disappear at any time. And we do not recommend using these features in a production setting. So the feature is available. It's there for you to mess around with. It is going to be coming out of beta at some point soon. But for the time being, it is in beta. So keep that in mind. Messaging is accessible under Zones and Messages. 
Then down here you have messages, which is sort of the old version. If you have feature preview turned on, you're going to have messages, new version preview. Right away, it's going to show you sent messages. Here, you have a search bar to search your messages. And you can also access your search options. So if I want to search for undelivered messages that did not make it through, system messages, search vehicle names only, and enter in a search period and hit apply. When I do a new message, this dialog box is going to pop up. And I can choose if I want to send a message to a device, a driver, or to a group. So I'll choose my device here and go to Compose Message. Here I can type my message. Now I can just hit send, but I can also put in some canned responses for the driver. So right down here at the bottom, provide the driver with canned replies for this message. So I can select one that's already here. So I might choose yes, no, or I can enter in my own canned responses. and then hit send, and that's going to send through to the tablet in the vehicle. Just to show you what that looks like on the driver side, this is what they're going to see. They're going to see the message come through, and then below that, you're going to have the canned responses. One other thing that you can use messaging for is dispatching. So you can use this to send uh, an address to a driver, or you can use it to send a zone to a driver. So for example, I'll bring up my zone here on the map, click on it, and then I can go to dispatch vehicle here. I can choose, again, device, driver, group, select, and then I can send it. Here's what it's going to look like on the driver side. This is actually a link that's going to appear in the messages in the tablet. And the driver has the option to click on that. It'll open it up in Google Maps, and they can use it for routing if they want. Now, here's something very important to keep in mind. If you're using this regularly, particularly for Google Maps and for routing, that is going to increase your data usage. So you do want to be aware of what data plan you're on, and you may need to bump up the plan if necessary. All right, so we don't have a ton of time left here today, but we've had uh, many, many, many questions coming through. Both Ben and Carrie have been uh, very busy responding to your excellent questions. Uh, ben, Carrie, are there any uh, particular questions that have come up here that, uh, um, uh, that would be useful to share with everyone? There has been a couple of questions. Ben, um, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, one of them is um, that's come up is the the add-in for the trailers. I just wanted to make a comment there that it is on the marketplace and will actually show you how to download it. It'll walk you right through it. So any of the add-ins on the marketplace that are free are certainly downloadable and you can get those on there. Um, another question that came up, Ben, and maybe you could answer this, is if there is a custom um, list that you want to add, but you don't really want to add everything all new, you just want to add to a current list. Can that be done or do you need to create it all over again? 
Are you talking about a defect list? Yes, on the DVIR defect list, that's correct. Uh, to to uh, correct me if I'm wrong, to my knowledge, uh, you, you would have to do an entire list. Yes, you have it'll, to. Re yes, you have to. Re yeah, it'll only it'll only show you if you have uh, if you create a custom list with three defects on it. You're not going to get the default plus the three new ones. You're just going to get the three new ones. So you would have to to create the entire list. Yes, correct. Okay, that makes sense. Um, there has been a lot of questions as well on editing logs, and um, one of them was to edit a log if you can edit the shipping information and. I just want to make a comment on that. Currently, you cannot. So when we spoke with the FMCSA back in May, what they suggested for anything that you cannot edit at this point is you annotate, annotate, annotate. Mm -hmm. So if the driver forgot to put, a, put shipping information in, and by the way, in the new year, you will see that they will be prompted for that shipping information. Um, if they forgot to put shipping information in, you need to annotate it at this point so that the shipping information is there so that they're not in violation. That would be your best bet. Okay. Um, again, to the teaching side of things, teach them to make sure they put them in there and then it won't be a problem. But if they do forget, you can put it into the annotation. Uh, I've also seen uh, some requests coming through for the um, uh, the previous Wildcard Wednesday, which was a walkthrough of GeoTab Drive. I'm going to add that to uh, the link section in GoToWebinar as well, link to that YouTube video. So today was the admin side, two weeks ago was the driver side, so that video is available to you as well. Um, as far as the trailer add-in, so that's accessible. So right here, while logged into my database, I went to Marketplace, and I just searched for the word trailer. So right here. You can click on it, and it'll have a button here that says install, and it's going to add it right into your database. So it's as simple as that. Okay, another thing that did come up was uh, the license plate that is on the vehicle. It does have to be filled in, and I, I noticed it wasn't filled in on a, on a couple of the vehicles that we looked at, but it must be filled in for regulation purposes, so just be careful of that. Um, it isn't part of the HOS section, just simply because it has to be there on the vehicle section, so ensure that you do have all of your uh, license plates in there, and for the drivers, they have to have their license numbers as well. So two things to note on that. Yep, uh, and then the uh, the license plate, so that is uh, entered in through your vehicle list, and you have this field right here for license plate. Uh, the driver's license number is added in through the user profile. When you're adding that driver into the database, there's a field for a, a license a driver's license number. All right, well, uh, it looks like we are uh, about out of time for today. So thank you all very much for attending. We, uh, we appreciate you joining us here today. Uh, thank you very much to Ben Schwartz and Carrie Carter for jumping in and, and answering all these questions. Uh, be sure to check out our blog, geotab.com slash blog. We always have uh, lots of new content there related to hours of service, ELD, and other topics as well. Uh, so again, my name is Ben Pulowski. Thank you very much for your attendance today. We appreciate it, and uh, hope everyone has a great day and a great week. Thanks, everyone.